Okay, so what I'm going to do is load up a version 17 model. So you don't have to now just create the version, uh, the model in version 18. I can load up an old model and add reinforcement to it. So file open, and it's just this simple building model I'm going to open up. It's just a simple four-story building. I've set up some load cases on it. Um, once it appears, I'll just start to look at the actual model itself. Okay, so it's telling me I need to convert it because it's a version 17 model. That's fine. Okay, so it's a basic model. I've got some load cases already set up with some of the dead loads, panel loads, and various uh, other loadings on the model. Now, what I need to do to use the design module is set up a number of things. First of all, go to the design menu, RC frame design. You can choose which of the national annexes you want to work with. I'm going to work with the United Kingdom. And you can choose whether you want to work with the building part or the bridge part of the design code. Obviously, I'm looking at a building here, so I'm going to go with the dash one. And we've got the national annex um, parameters here. You can change those, but I'm just going to leave those as they are. Okay, so that's defined which design code and which part of the design code I'm going to work with. What I now need to do is add some design attributes. So if I go to the attributes tab, down to the design item, and RC frame design. Now what this design attribute will allow me to do is set up the way things like the ULS calculations are done, the SS calculations, the way the elastic modulus is calculated for the creep calculations. So all of these can be changed. I'm just going to leave with the defaults. And on tab one here, the general tab, most crucially, I need to define my minimum and maximum reinforcements for a beam section or a column section because they're different. So I'm going to create two design attributes, one called beam. And I'm going to swap over and create one for the column as well. So and OK that. So there are my two design attributes. They're not assigned at the moment. So what I want to do is go to the geometric sections here, right hand mouse button, select assignments. I just need to switch on my geometry layer before I do that. So OK, so select assignments. And that will pick all the lines representing the beams in the model. And I'm going to assign the beam design attributes. Second section here, if I select assignments, that will select all the lines representing the columns, and I can define those as well. Okay, so I've assigned my design attributes to my beams and columns. The final thing I need to do is define some reinforcement layouts. So let me go to one of the sections here. If I double click on it, this is the typical uh, geometric attribute dialog. But if you've got the RC module, you'll see you've got an extra item here now that allows you to define the reinforcement. I haven't got any reinforcement in this model because it came in from version 17. So new, and now I can now start to define my reinforcement. Now here I can define different sections of reinforcement along a single line. And we're going to look at that in the next example I look at. But for this one, I'm just going to define one cross section along the whole line. So I'm going here, new, and this is now the details of the reinforcement I'm going to set up. So I'm going to allow a 30 mil cover and an allowance for a link of 10 millimeters. If I now go to the layers of rebar, I can start to set up what types of rebar I want in each faces. Now for this square section, we've got four faces and I'm going to deal with face number one first of all. And I'm going to put three bars into that face and the bar diameter I'm going to put in as 20 mil. And there you can see three bars. Now, the reason they're blue at the moment is because that's the active layer that I'm looking at. Now, if I add a new layer to this uh, cross section, you'll see the bars have gone red now. And that's because there's a clash. Both of these definitions are saying face one at the moment. So I've got two sets of bars on top of each other. So let's change this second one to be face three. And then you'll see that the blue bars jump to the top because that's the active layer. So we've got some bottom and top reinforcement. So let's add us some in the side. So I'm going to add, and this is going to be phase two. Now, as I do that, you'll see that I've got a blue bar in the middle, but the red bars are in corners, there's a clash. And that's because the bottom face and the side face have got doubling up on bars in the corners. Now, to get over that, I can basically choose how I want the end bars to be considered. So for the face, I'm going to admit both the end bars. So I'm just dealing with the middle bar there. Finally, I'm going to add a fourth face in, and that's going to be face four there. 
So a very simplistic uh, reinforcement layout, but that's fine. So I'm going to give this a name now. And OK, that's, and I'm going to give this a name reinforcement layout. And OK. OK, so I've created my reinforcement for this section. If I go to the next section now, rather than actually defining the reinforcement, because I have now one defined in my model, I can actually choose to use that again for this particular layout here. So I can use the same bars in two different sections. Now, what I've done here is obviously very simplistic, and actually things will be more complicated than that. Now, rather than look at this particular model, I'm going to jump to a more complicated model to look at. And this is going to be a, a bridge model. Now, in this bridge model, we've already set the design code to the Eurocodes part two. And we've also designed, uh, defined the design attributes. We've also set up the um, engineering properties for the layout, so the reinforcement. So if I look at this arch section here, we've got some reinforcement. And if I were to look at this and edit it, you'll see the reinforcement here. Now, if I scroll into this, you can see that we've got a more complex reinforcement layout here. So in the bottom face, we've got two layers of reinforcement. We've also got it so we've got alternate bars in one of the faces. So we've got a big bar, a smaller bar, big bar. So you can set up quite complex reinforcement patterns. I'm going to close that down and look at another section. Here we've got a tapering section. So part of the arch is tapering from a, a large rectangular section to a small rectangular section. Now, because the reinforcement is defined in the faces, it's very easy for us to put the faces in and then it will work with these tapering sections. Finally, I'm going to look at the deck section because this is the most complex section we've got in this model. And again, I'm going to edit the reinforcement. Now here you can see that I've got different sections of reinforcement set up for different portions of the line. So essentially for the first two and a half meters of this deck section, we've got a different reinforcement layout. The ends are the same, but in the middle we've got a different set and that's going to stretch to fit the line that we've got in this section. If I edit the detail reinforcement and look at the rebar, you can see that I've got quite a complex rebar set up for this particular section. So we can work with anything from just simple rectangles to more complicated shapes such as this deck section. Now what I'm going to do with this model is I'm now going to go on and look at the actual design calculations for this reinforcement. Now to do that I need to set up a design results attribute, so design RC frame design results. Now this is allowing me to choose which part of the model I want to work with, so I'm going to choose all members in this particular case, and where you want the calculations to be carried out. So at the moment, if you leave this on nodes, the calculation will be carried out at the ends of the elements. If I change to internal points, it would basically calculate at 11 positions along each element. So much more calculations being done, but you'll then get a finer sort of uh, display of the results. For this particular demonstration, I'm just going to leave it at the nodes. Here, I'm going to set up how my load groups are acting with my model. Now, if I just cancel that for the moment and look at my analysis tab, what you'll see is I've used the combination builder to basically build ULS and SLS combinations, and it's these that I'm now going to associate in that design results attribute of which load groups are associated with the ULS and SLS checks. So, if I go back in here, so for the ULS checks, I'm going to select the envelope of the ULS effects, which is that one there. For the SLS characteristic checks, I'm going to select the ULS envelope, which is 46, that one, 46. And for the quasi-permanent, I'm just going to select that low case there. And that's OK. So this is setting up what loads are going to be used against which of the design checks. So OK that. And I'm ready to start to look at my reinforcement layout. So if I set this as active, down at the bottom here you'll see a taskbar as the calculations are performed. 
And once the calculations have been calculated, in this case you should see some results being displayed at node locations. Now, it takes a few seconds, but there are the results. Now, what we're looking at here is colored sort of blobs at the node locations, and we're looking at the utilization of the ULS check at the moment. Now, if I were to just zoom into this part of the model, yeah, you'll see that this location we have three results, and that's because we've got the vertical member and we've got the two arch members coming in there. And it's the vertical members of the highest loaded in this particular case. Now, in terms of the results, I could look at any of the results individually on the screen using the check here. But if I wanted to look at all the results, I can look at a table summary by basically right hand mouse button, show results. Again, this takes a few seconds to build, but it will give me a summary of all the design checks that have been taking place and it will show me by colouring them whether they've passed or failed the particular checks that I'm interested in. Okay, so it's nearly done and the check should appear on the screen. So here we've got the, the line numbers, the elements and where the node is. That's telling me the information and then we've got the results of the ULS, SLS checks. This coloured bar down the side here is indicating green, it's passed. And if I scroll down, you'll see some sections that have failed, and it tells me which is the failing calculation. Now, if I want to look in more detail in this, what I can do is I can click here, and it will show me then the detailed calculations that have been carried out for this particular location. It will show me a representation of the section, the reinforcement in the section, where the neutral axis is. And if I scroll down the left hand side here, it will show me the detailed calculations that are being performed. And if I jump to the bottom, it will show me the one in red that's failing. And so there we go. There's the one I would need to check. Now I could go in and modify the reinforcement or increase the section size until I got this to pass effectively. Now these calculations can be viewed on screen, but as Phil said earlier, I can add them to the LUSAS report so you can get a hard copy of these out in the model. And if you change your model, these calculations will automatically update. Now, as well as the calculations we're seeing on the screen here, there are other things I can look at. So I can look at the interaction diagram. So this is looking at a 2D interaction diagram. Now, at the moment, what we're looking at is uh, different axial forces and the moment resistance that's being calculated. Now, if I just set this number to 2, it should just show me where we're at at the moment. So this is the, the moment resistance that's been calculated at the given axial load. And the blue dot there is where we're at in the model. The black outline is the capacity of the section. If I change this back to 15. I can also look at this in a 3D view. So there's the limit that we're at at the moment. But this allows me to see what happens if I increase or reduce my axial load and how that affects the sort of the moment resistance. Because in some cases you might find by reducing the axial load, the, the section might start to fail. So it's quite a nice little image to look at in terms of these. So either in 2D or 3D. And again, these can be added to the reports if you want. So I'm just going to close that down. So hopefully what I've tried to do is show you how simple and easy it is to define reinforcement and then go on to look at design calculations